Hi, my name is Hillary Wynn and I am a summer student with the Government of the Northwest Territories. Today I'm here with Territorial Medical Director Dr. Anne-Marie Pegg who will be answering important questions about COVID-19 vaccines from youth across the NWT. Thanks Hillary. First, I'd really like to thank all the youth, parents and teachers or community members who took the time to submit these questions. I know that there's a lot of information and misinformation out there about COVID-19 vaccines and so it's really important to have these conversations like this with people that you trust. It's important to ask lots of questions and especially if it involves your health and well-being. I'm going to answer as many questions as I can today um, but also follow up directly with uh, anyone whose answers wouldn't fit into this short video. All right, so the first question is, what's in COVID-19 vaccines? If I have a dairy allergy, are COVID-19 vaccines safe for me? So like all vaccines, it's possible to have serious or severe allergic reactions, and COVID-19 vaccines are no different. Anyone getting vaccinated will be screened by the nurse to ask if they've had any reactions to vaccines in the past, if they've had any reactions to vaccine ingredients, packaging, or to a previous dose. Food allergies alone, like dairy, but also uh, to eggs, for example, which can be found in some other vaccines, will not cause a reaction to the COVID-19 vaccine. The COVID-19 vaccines available in the Northwest Territories have the following ingredients. They have mRNA in them, and this is what actually teaches your body to protect itself from the COVID-19 virus without actually getting sick from the virus. There's no virus in the vaccine. In order to protect the mRNA, there's a fatty coating called lipids, uh, which are included in the vaccine. That's how the vaccine gets into our cells. There are sugars to protect the lipids from damage at the ultra cold temperatures that are needed to store the vaccine. There are salts to help balance the acidity in your body of the vaccine. And there are stabilizers to help the vaccine keep its form, as well as water, which is how the vaccine gets injected. There is one possible ingredient that's known to cause an allergic reaction in the vaccine, and that's called polyethylene glycol, or PEG. It's commonly found in a lot of things, so people will probably have encountered it before and would know if they've had a reaction. They can also check with their healthcare provider, but it's commonly found in things like cough syrup, makeup, as well as certain foods and drinks. So you should check with your healthcare provider if you're not sure. All right, thank you for the answer. Our second question is, who made the COVID-19 vaccines and can these companies be trusted? So the COVID-19 vaccines that are available in the Northwest Territories are made by two companies, Pfizer and Moderna. Both of these companies make other types of medication um, that can help you when you're sick. Both companies ran three phases of clinical trials with tens of thousands of volunteers, and they released the results publicly to prove that they had nothing to hide. Both companies also reported that the vaccines were 90% effective during these trials, and that's really high protection against the virus. You can be confident that any of the vaccines available in Canada have been reviewed by scientific experts in their field. And they've been carefully tested to make sure that they're safe and effective. And as well, like any medication or medical product, monitor, monitoring of that product continues for as long as the product is in use. There's a lot of discussion about ongoing monitoring of vaccines and concern that that indicates that they're not safe. But what people need to realize is every single medication and every single medical product, as long as it's in use, is still undergoing ongoing monitoring to make sure that it's safe and there's no unanticipated side effects from use of that medication or product. Our third question is, what does it mean that the COVID-19 vaccines were fast-tracked? Are they still safe? Yeah, lots of information out there about that. It's important to remember, first of all, that the mRNA platform for COVID-19 vaccines has been under study and development for decades. It's not brand new. It's something that's been developed over a very long period of time. Compared to other vaccines, it's true the COVID-19 vaccines were developed quickly, but that's a good news story because scientists, researchers, and funders from around the world were able to work together to fight a common enemy. There was a lot of interest mm -hmm. in finding a vaccine yeah. uh, to, to, fight this, to fight this common enemy. 
It allowed scientists to follow all of the same processes, but it allowed steps to be overlapped. And most importantly, it allowed for a lot of freedom for scientists to pursue their work uh, with a lot of funding available to do so. It was also easy to find volunteers to participate in clinical trials because the effects of COVID-19 had been so devastating because so many people were affected by the virus and a lot of people were really excited about the possibility of receiving a vaccine. So the fast track process doesn't actually mean that steps were skipped. All vaccines go through strict and demanding processes before they're approved for use in Canada and the COVID-19 vaccines were no exception. The best scientists and experts in the country made sure that the COVID-19 vaccines were safe and effective before they made it uh, all their way up here to you. Oh, nice. Question number four asks, what happens if I have a reaction to the COVID-19 vaccine? So out of the millions of COVID-19 vaccines that have been delivered across Canada, it's good news to know that severe reactions have been extremely rare. There have been vaccine reactions, but most have not been serious. But in the rare event that you do have a serious reaction, it usually happens right after getting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason that you'll wait 15 minutes after having your vaccine. And some people, in fact, will wait 30 minutes if they've had some type of reaction before or if they're deemed to be at higher risk by a healthcare professional. It's also important to remember that all of the nurses who are administering the vaccines at our vaccine clinics are trained to how to respond to an emergency and are able to do so if one were to arise. Question number five asks, how do you know that COVID-19 vaccines won't give me any long-term side effects later in my life? Why is it safe to give me one of these vaccines when we might not know enough about it? So it's true that we can't say for sure that there are no long-term side effects for COVID-19 vaccines. Mm -hmm. They haven't been around long enough. But you can trust that the top scientists and experts in the field of vaccinology, which is the study of vaccines, have been studying these mRNA vaccines, as I mentioned before, for decades. Mm -hmm. And experts have only approved the vaccines for use in Canada after they were confident in their safety. When they looked at the mechanism of action and how the vaccines behave in cells and extrapolated or used the information that they got from those uh, trials and experiments to determine what the effects would be within our own cells. Getting the vaccine is almost always safer than getting the disease. So millions of doses of COVID vaccine have been given around the world and are protecting people successfully from getting very sick or from dying from the virus. Yeah, of course. Question number six, are kids at high risk of getting sick from COVID-19? Do we really need the vaccine? So even though kids don't usually get as sick as adults do from COVID-19, there are more and more cases of young people getting hospitalized with serious disease, particularly from the new, more transmissible or more contagious variants that we hear about in the news. COVID-19 is also particularly harmful for kids who have risk factors for severe disease, such as diabetes or asthma or obesity, just like it can be for adults. Kids can also develop long-term symptoms after a COVID infection, just like adults can, and in some cases that has led to long-term complications or even disability. So just because you have a pretty low risk of dying doesn't mean that you have a low risk of complications. What's more is that kids can still spread the virus to their family and to their friends and can be uh, involved in outbreaks even if they themselves are not the ones who are getting particularly sick. So COVID-19 vaccines can help to make schools and sports and all the other activities that we love to do more safe. Question number seven asks, will COVID-19 vaccines affect my ability to have a baby later in life? If not, why not? No, is the short answer to that. <laughs> So COVID-19 vaccines do not change your DNA. That's the part of your cells that make you, you. It's impossible for the vaccine components to get into the DNA, and it's therefore impossible for them to affect your ability to have children later in life. Question number eight, why can I still get COVID-19 after I'm vaccinated? So no vaccine is 100% effective. So it's still possible for vaccinated people to get a mild case of COVID-19. This means that they may only get some minor symptoms or it might actually mean that they get no symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. The good news is, is that both vaccines that are available in the Northwest Territories are over 90% effective at protecting you from the virus. 
This actually makes them some of the most effective vaccines ever produced. <laughs> The vaccine will also protect you from being hospitalized or dying from COVID-19, yeah. um, which is another benefit of being vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Question number nine, what if my parents don't want me to get a COVID-19 vaccine? So in the Northwest Territories, youth over the age of 14 are able to consent to medical treatments if the person providing that treatment is confident in that youth's ability to understand the aspects of the treatment, the risks of the treatment, and the benefits of the treatment. This doesn't just apply to vaccines, it applies to all kinds of medical treatments and all kinds of procedures. So youth over the age of 14 are able to consent to be vaccinated. However, it's really important to speak to your parents prior to getting vaccinated, particularly if they may have some concerns. Yeah. Most of the time, the reason that parents have concerns is the reason they have concerns about lots of things. They want to keep you safe. Yeah. So perhaps there's been something in this interview or this segment that was helpful to you that you can use to explain to your parents. Uh, perhaps there's some information that you have found uh, from a reliable source that you can use to explain uh, the vaccination process to your parents. It's important to understand what their reasons are behind not wanting you to get vaccinated and to sit and talk with them about why it's important to you to get vaccinated. And it may be helpful to go with your parents to talk with a healthcare provider so that your parents can also ask some questions of someone that they trust um, and you can also share that information. Yeah. Question 10, where and when can I get a COVID-19 vaccine if I'm not in Yellowknife? So youth age 12 to 17 in all of the NWT communities will have a chance to get vaccinated um, with one or both doses uh, before the end of the school year. If everything goes well with our planning and the weather cooperates now that it's summer and we don't have troubles with our planes. Youth who are not currently in school can also contact their local health center in order to arrange to get a dose of vaccine. That's awesome. Question number 11, do COVID-19 vaccines increase the likelihood of blood clots? That's another thing that's made a lot of news lately. Um, particularly, two of the vaccines that are currently being used um, in certain countries, including Canada, um, have been associated with a very rare risk of a certain type of blood clots. Those vaccines are a platform called a viral vector vaccine, where the vaccine works by embedding a part of the COVID-19 virus into another harmless virus injecting it and stimulating the body to make antibodies to protect you against the virus. That's not how the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines work, which are the two vaccines that are available in the Northwest Territories. They're mRNA vaccines, not viral vector vaccines. And mRNA vaccines have not been associated with a higher risk of blood clots. Well, thank you for your explanation. Question number 12 asks, if I have already had COVID-19, do I still need to get the vaccine? And how long do I need to wait after a positive COVID-19 test to get vaccinated? So even if you've already had COVID-19, you should still be vaccinated when it's offered to you. And the reason for this is the protection that someone gains from having COVID-19 will vary from person to person. Mm -hmm. So the level of the antibodies or the level of protection that you have after an infection may be different between one person and another. And we also don't know how long this natural immunity might last. The other thing that's important to remember is immunity from a wild type infection, which is sort of the original version of COVID, may not protect you from infection by one of the variants. And if you've been infected by one of the variants, we don't know if you'll have protection against all of the variants. So far, what we know is the vaccine gives really good protection against the variants that have already been identified to be circulating. So that's one reason, uh, a bunch of reasons actually, to get vaccinated. Yeah. You're allowed to get vaccinated at any point, even during your isolation period, as long as you don't have any symptoms of COVID-19. So if you're isolating after potentially being exposed, you can request vaccine during isolation by emailing uh, CPHO, at gov.nt.ca to get an approval letter. And if you've already had COVID, once you're feeling better and you're out of your isolation period, then you can make an appointment to get vaccinated. All right. And last but not least, question 13. What are the possible side effects to the vaccine and how soon do they usually present? 
So like all medications, certainly vaccines can have side effects. And the side effects to the COVID-19 vaccines are usually mild or moderate and usually only last a few days. The side effects of the vaccine can be more common after your second dose. And I think that's something that's made a lot of news and certainly uh, people are pretty well aware of that now. The side effects usually look like pain, redness or swelling where the vaccine was given or sometimes even a red mark just below where the vaccine was given, swelling and tenderness in the armpit, some fatigue or tiredness, headache, some muscle or joint pain or fever and chills. And the thing to remember is that the side effects are actually a good sign that your body's immune system has kicked in to build immunity against the disease. So it's evidence that your body is doing what it's supposed to do after a vaccine and making antibodies. But even if you don't experience any side effects, the vaccine is still working. And that was our last question. Thank you to everyone who submitted a question and to Dr. Pegg for being here today. If you need more information about COVID-19 vaccines available in the NWT, please visit www.gov.nt.ca slash COVID-19.